Hi everyone, welcome back to the Gate of Heaven video diary and I hope you're all enjoying the new song Remover of Difficulties. It just came out on Saturday and I, I really hope you, you, I hope this song connects with you. Uh, as many of you know, I'm sure this song is based on some of the, the most well-known writings of the Bab, this prayer known as the Remover of Difficulties is, is something that many of us have been familiar with for, for a long time. And uh, it, whether whether these words are new or old to you, I hope that they are bringing you some some strength and comfort in in uh, in the face of your own difficulties whatever whatever they may be um i i'm really excited because uh, uh next saturday i'm going to release another song from gate of heaven it's a, it's another it's based on another beautiful prayer written by the bab uh, on the subject of forgiveness so that will be posted on my youtube channel on saturday april 6th so i, I look forward to sharing that with you and um, if you haven't heard remover of difficulties i'll put the link below and i hope you enjoy it um and so i thought we could we could in preparation for the release of forgiveness the, the next song we could uh, just continue our journey through the dawnbreakers and um you know continue preparing ourselves for the the celebration of the bicentenary of the birth of the Bab coming up in October. So in the last video, uh, I know that we had we had taken a moment to, to, to learn about Khadija, the wife of the Bab, and we had really explored, uh, we had looked at her, a memoir of hers about their life together and about that moment when everything had changed for her. Uh, and uh, we'd also looked at that, um, the moment when they, when they parted, uh, when, when the Bab was expelled from Shiraz on the orders of, of Hussein Khan, the governor. So uh, in, in this video, we're, we're going to look at this, we're going to continue um, this from this moment when the Bab is expelled from his hometown. And uh, he, he uh, essentially Hussein Khan, in the face of this plague that has struck Shiraz, he has told the constable, just get rid of the Bab, send him out of the city and he can go anywhere he wants, basically anywhere but Shiraz. And so the Bab is now, uh, from this moment, he is, he is now forever separated from his wife and from his mother. And he's also temporarily separated from his uncle, Haji Mirza Sayyid Ali, uh, who had really been... He really was like the Bab's father figure because ever since the Bab's father had died, his uncle, that was his mother's sis, his mother's brother, uh, really took the role of his father. He had t taken care of the Bab's schooling. You might remember from uh, another video, he had taken the Bab under his wing as a as a an apprentice and and taught him how to how to be a merchant in his business. And Haji Mirza Sayyid Ali really. He, he he was so devoted to his nephew and he actually um he he will in fact see the bab again later on in the story and he he becomes so so devoted to to the bab that uh, later on in the story he actually eventually sacrifices his life for his nephew so we will learn more about haji sayed mirza ali uh, a bit later but uh Having having left Shiraz, the Bab makes his way to that beautiful city of Esfahan, known as the Jewel of Iran, that city in the center of Iran, to which over the preceding months he has been directing many of his followers to gather there. And so by the time he arrives in Esfahan, there, the, the, the city is full of his followers and, and uh, you know, word has spread about the, about the fame of the Bab and people have heard all these stories about him. And unlike the the tyrant governor of, of Shiraz, Hussein Khan, the governor of Esfahan is actually much more open-minded and is, is, is genuinely curious about the Bab. And so when, when the governor of Esfahan, his name is Manu Cher Khan, when, when he learns that the Bab has arrived in Esfahan, he instructs the, the leader of the city's mosque to host the Bab in his home as an honoured guest of the city and to treat him with the, the utmost respect and hospitality. And so while, while staying in, the, uh, in the, the mosque leader's home, uh, there are throngs of people coming to visit the Bab. Some of them are his followers who are finally coming to meet him. Uh, some of them are people who are who are curious to know what is this all about, and some people are, you know, for example, they are some of the religious leaders of the city who are coming 
to actually challenge the Bab, and in some cases for the express purpose of picking arguments with the Bab. And so there are these throngs of people coming to the house and there, there are gatherings day after day. There are gatherings where people are discussing all sorts of subjects with the Bab. And Manucher Khan, the governor, starts attending these, these gatherings himself. And he's extremely impressed by the, the character of the Bab and his eloquence and the way he speaks in these meetings. And at one of these gatherings, Manucher Khan uh, puts a question to the Bab, a question, a major question that has, that has troubled him all his life, a question to which none of the, the religious leaders uh, of Esfahan have ever really been able to, to give a satisfactory answer. The, the Manachar Khan, he, he says to the Bab in one of these gatherings that, that although he has been a Muslim all his life, he has never really felt a, a deep, heartfelt conviction about the truth of the Prophet Muhammad and the religion of Islam. And he asks the Bab if he will, once and for all, explain to him uh, the truth about uh, Muhammad and Islam. Essentially, he, he, he asks the Bab, what is the truth about Islam? which I think is a, a question that is very relevant to today's world, that many people in many different parts of the world are, uh, are asking this question. And the Bab, in the presence of all of these religious leaders gathered in the house, picks up his pen and he begins to write. And these religious leaders sit in awe as they watch the Bab spontaneously compose an entire book without pausing, without editing, without stopping to correct a word or without a single thought for a, for a, a second draft. And, you know, this is uh, anybody who is a writer of any kind knows that, you know, uh, pausing and editing and changing things and trying out different ways of saying things, whether you're a poet or a songwriter or a, a writer or novelist of any kind, you're, you're well aware that, you know, that this whole uh, realm of, 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 of a writing process involves, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, qu quite, um, uh, it involves a, lo a lot of effort to try out different things and change things. Not so with the Bob. For two hours, he does not lift his pen from the page. He writes a book from start to finish containing the most profound exposition about the mission of the Prophet Muhammad and the role of Islam in the history of the world that, that Manu Cher Khan has ever heard in his life. And as Manu Cher Khan witnesses this, this revelation, he says, to the, he says to the whole group of people in front of him, he says, never until this day have I, in my heart, been firmly convinced of the truth of Islam? I can, henceforth, thanks to this exposition penned by this youth, declare myself a firm believer in the faith proclaimed by the Apostle of God, Muhammad. I solemnly testify to my belief in the reality of the superhuman power with which this youth, the Bab, is endowed, a power which no amount of learning can ever impart. And so in that moment, the governor of Esfahan, the ruler of one of the most important centers of religious scholarship in all of the Middle East, is not only confirmed in his faith in the prophets of the past, but he also embraces the message of the Bab and becomes a Babi. But of course, this profession of the governor's faith in the Bab, as you can imagine, does not sit well at all with uh, all of these religious leaders sitting around the room who, who feel humiliated at the apparent inadequacy of their own efforts to, to function as spiritual guides to the people of their city. And this terrible envy starts to burn in their hearts towards the Bab, who in the space of two hours 
has utterly transformed the heart of their governor, who has remained unresponsive to their decades of, of, of hard work and sermonising in Esfahan. And, you know, I was thinking about this, this envy that starts to kindle in the hearts of these clerics. And I was thinking that, you know, that I think at the, at the root of all envy is actually fear. That, you know, we all have the capacity to feel envy, but envy can only grow in a setting of fear. Uh, you know, fear that we're going to that we're, we're going to lose something, that we're threatened by something, fear that some, some, uh, someone is going to overshadow us or, or someone's position is going to take away a, a position that we long to have or something like that. Um, and I was just reflecting on this and, and I was reminded of a, a, a passage, a quote of Baha'u'llah. Baha'u'llah once said that love never dwells in a heart possessed by fear. And... I was thinking about this connection between fear and envy because you can't really feel true love and envy at the same time. Uh, these two things can never dwell in your heart at the same time because love wants wants things to love wants to build, love wants to nurture, love wants to actualize, love wants to to see things and people become what they can become. Whereas envy wants to destroy. And so on this subject, I wanted to share with you a, just a short paragraph from the narrative of the Dawnbreakers um, speaking about this, this envy that starts to burn ever fiercer in the hearts of the clerics of Esfahan. Nabil writes, The growing popularity of the Bab aroused the resentment of the ecclesiastical authorities of Esfahan who viewed with concern and envy the ascendancy which an unlearned youth was slowly acquiring over the thoughts and consciences of their followers. They firmly believed that unless they rose to stem the tide of popular enthusiasm, the very foundations of their existence would be undermined. And so the clerics of Esfahan fearful that the Bab is going to undermine their authority, they gather together and they, they begin a process of consolidating their power. And, you know, the clerics had a, they had a huge amount of power in, in this society. They, they really, they had a huge amount of sway in uh, the, the affairs of the country. And so they put their power together and they draw up a document uh, accusing the Bab of heresy. And based on this document, this accusation, they issue a fatwa, a decree against the Bab, sentencing him to death. And so, of course, Manu Cher Khan, on learning of this death sentence that has been issued against the Bab, and he himself becoming more and more devoted to the Bab, he wants to do everything that he can to prevent these religious leaders from carrying out this death sentence and he sets about set, he hatches a plan to protect the bab and so in in the next video we will look at what manu cher khan does to protect the bab and prevent this from happening so thank you for watching and uh, as usual i'd be really grateful if you could uh, give this video a like if you if you enjoyed it that way more people will see it share it with your networks and subscribe to my youtube channel and if you feel like you'd like to support my music and videos you can become a patron at patreon.com slash luke slot and don't forget if you haven't heard remover of difficulties it's below this video i hope you enjoy it and i'll see you in the next video bye